So, at this point, you're probably pretty aware of the world of Warhammer. It's gotten very popular lately, even with people that aren't super into fantasy, they've at least heard about it. And, uh, it's been touted as this, like, methamphetamine of nerd culture. Not even meth, like, the, the black tar heroine of nerd culture, you know? Like, maybe you're getting into a little bit of Lord of the Rings, like, that, that's some green, you know, that's some, that's a weed, right? Um, but if you're getting into Warhammer, you're getting into, like, heroin level nerd fandom stuff. Like, Warhammer is the nerd shit that will consume your life, is never ending, and will make you spend countless thousands of dollars on, like, little plastic- plastic crack, exactly. Plastic crack. Um, now I'm not really, like, a huge Warhammer guy myself. I find the world quite interesting. I've- I've taken a, a dip into the lore myself. I definitely find it interesting. Um, but I wouldn't call myself an expert in it by any means, and I wouldn't call myself, like, I wouldn't steal the valor of saying that I'm a fan of Warhammer, you know? I'd say I'm a- I'm an enthusiast. I'm a, I'm a tourist of Warhammer, as the, uh, as the chuds like to call me. And, uh, to give you an idea, those of you guys who don't know much about it, what it's like, I guess I can show you a brief clip from the, uh, GameSpot Warhammer the Horus Heresy cinematic trailer. Um... For those that don't know, the Horus Heresy, it's like a big event that happens in the Warhammer universe. Um, most of Warhammer is not just the Space Marines, to be clear. But when people talk about Warhammer, they're mostly talking about the Imperium of Man and and its Space Marines. So, you know, like, this, this cinematic kind of evokes the vibe of the piece of media that we're talking about here, if you, uh, if you have not seen it and don't know what we're talking about. It is very over the top in every way. On purpose. I never wanted this. I never wanted to unleash my legions. Together we banished the ignorance of old night. Stole power from the gods and lied to your sons. Mankind has only one chance to prosper. If you will not seize it, then I will. Yeah, like the the like if you see like a giant robot mech in the Warhammer universe, you may look at it and be like, "Oh, this thing's pretty big." You got to remember, this dude's like twenty feet tall or something. So these mechs are the size of, like, a skyscraper. Their spaceships are massive city-sized cathedrals, like, more like mega-city-sized cathedrals that float through space. And these mechs are people. Like, there is a human brain inside them, like some shit out of Dune. Um, like, a lot of Warhammer lore is, is taken straight from Dune. So the, the Imperium is, is basically also the Empire from Dune. In a lot of ways. So let it be more. The machine spirit. So yeah, basically in the future there's only war. And as you can imagine, like, d dude bros who love their escapist, like, hyper-violent masculine fantasy shit they love this they love it and i admit i love it too i think it's pretty cool i think it's pretty cool warhammer fans in the, in the comments will get mad if i stop it here hell divers let the seas boil let the stars fall. So it's it very over the top. The last drop I love it. Of my blood. I will see the galaxy freed once more. And if I cannot save it from your failure, Father, then let the galaxy burn. <laughs> <coughs> 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 
Sorry, I was coughing from the coolness. So, um, yeah, this is like a pretty good sample of the tone and vibe of Warhammer. Um, to be honest, that was more exciting and, and awesome than it was like the level of gritty and dark that Warhammer is mostly known for. But regardless, that gives you kind of the vibe. I think you can kind of get why conservatives love it especially, and why so many chuds love Warhammer, and why chuds have become so protective of Warhammer. You have to understand that for a lot of conservatives, Warhammer is seen as, like, the final stand, the final keep of cultural popularity that does not have overtly progressive values dripping from it. Now, even though Warhammer has always been a, a, like a satire of militaristic jingoist fascism, at least they were able to look past it. And Warhammer, with such a large audience of conservatives and the story being such that the Imperium is effectively always the main character of the galaxy all the time, this means it's easy to pretend the writers are writing the story in such a way where you're supposed to root for the Imperium. And that they're the good guys who are, like, just annihilating the Xeno scum to achieve their natural birthright that is full galactic conquest. So, I do think that uh, conservatives view Warhammer as a property, as something that they need to protect, gatekeep, and for all that is holy, keep it from becoming normie-friendly. From the normies coming in and changing it or making it more popular outside of their little niche circle where they can feel special about being into something so nerdy, so hardcore nerdy, that a lot of people for a long time were like, what if you asked them if they were into it? Like, you ask somebody who wasn't into nerd stuff, are you into Star Wars? They at least know what Star Wars is. If you ask them, like, five or six years ago, are you into Warhammer? They'd be like, Warhammer? Like, the weapon? What? I heard about Warhammer for the first time, like, maybe four or five years ago. Like, maybe that's more recent. Well, technically, I heard about it, like, six years ago. But, I mean, it's been around. Don't get me wrong. There were lore channels and stuff, and you heard references to it. But, I mean, it wasn't everywhere like it is even now. And I think we're only at the beginning of its height of popularity that's coming. Like, we've got that upcoming Warhammer show being produced by Henry Cavill. Um, and I think he's going to play the main character. That is going to elevate the show into, or not the show, the uh, property of Warhammer into levels of popularity thought unreachable. Um, it's going to be fucking crazy when the normies get in. The gatekeeping is just not a thing you can do. You can't gatekeep a popular good thing. People are just going to discover it. They're going to like it. They're going to talk about it. And they're going to worm their way into the community. And if not, they're going to become the community. So, <clears throat> as you can imagine... The right got very upset when some recent news came out of the official Warhammer Twitter account. Announcing the full, complete confirmation that the Custodes, who are a group of high-ranking uh, like executors of the uh, Imperium's will, of the Emperor's will, um, the Custodes, or the Custodians, uh, that they have female members. Mind you, the Custodians are, like, bigger and badder than even, like, the iconic Space Marines. Like, down to the point of having, like, a foot of height on them, maybe. Yeah, they're the Emperor's personal bodyguards. Like, they are... They're his guys. They're his dudes. They're, they're like, his top-tier guys. They're his personal picks. So, Games Workshop, I think it is... Not Games Workshop. Is it, um... Yeah, Games Workshop. Um, has confirmed that, uh... uh there are female custodies. And that is something the right is not happy about. And if you're wondering why that upsets them, I mean, well, on one end, there's the people who are just blatantly misogynistic. And on the other hand, you've got the people who think of Warhammer as this. And they think women can't do this. Or it's more effective if it's dudes doing this. Just for the aesthetic and immersion of hyper-masculine grit fantasy, you know? I, I think that a lot of it is, for many Warhammer fans, just women present 
in certain situations breaks their immersion immersion even though there are female soldiers in the imperium um like when it comes the to like certain parts of the imperium they don't like if there's women um so this has been something that they're really upset about they've tried to cope and say it's like a retcon and that's what they have a problem with but like Warhammer and retcon are basically like the same word at this point. So if that was your problem, then you you'd you'd had a problem sooner. <laughs> so it's like pretty obvious what they actually take issue with even then. But here we're going to be going over somebody's reaction to the Warhammer announcement. Someone who you might not have heard of in a very long time if you've heard of them at all. How many of you guys remember a guy whose nickname on the left is Nazi Thor? But his official name that he goes by is the Golden One. You'll see what he looks like in a moment. There's a reason why people call him Nazi Thor. But let's go ahead and read the uh, read his tweet. I can no longer endorse this heresy with my silence. Has the time come to say for farewell to Games Workshop and Warhammer at Warhammer? The ever-increasing wokeness of the company has reached a critical point. Perhaps this was brought about by malicious actors within the company, or perhaps by sinister outside forces. I noticed that BlackRock is a shareholder in Games Workshop. That's the Sweet Baby Inc. stuff, the, uh, the, the Gamergate 2 thing. Um, I have been a fan of Warhammer for over 20 years. My first fantasy, then the Horus Heresy in Warhammer 40k. So it pains me greatly to see this development. I can imagine that it also pains many within Games Workshop to be bullied by external forces like this. To be forced to butcher their own lore, and to see longtime fans leave in frustration. It cannot be easy for someone who actually likes the company and the hobby. Literally just women exist is, is what they have an issue with here. I somewhat doubt that the ones pushing the woke agenda care about Warhammer. It's all about a political message. Sad stuff. I am hoping for a redemption arc. Ah, uh, yes, the redemption arc of women bad. Realize that women are bad. That is your redemption arc. You must go on. But I am probably hoping for too much in that regard. And then he attaches a nine-minute video we will not be watching all of, fucking obviously. I'll speed it up a little bit so we can get through it a little faster, but... Um, you're about to find out why he's called Nazi Thor. Uh, for those that don't know, this guy's like an open anti-Semite and white supremacist. Like, this guy JQs very openly. He describes himself as a Nazi. Um, he is, like, he's openly a race realist and against any form of immigration or race mixing, that kind of thing. So, yeah. But he does look like Thor. He is buff as shit and quite attractive, so... Of all the conservatives online, you can't really give this guy any shit for his appearance. Like, most of them you can, you know? Like, like most conservatives you see online, it's like, holy shit, you are a actual parody the way you look, saying the things you're saying. This guy, though, it's like, I mean, fuck, I can't, I can't really say shit, can I? All right, let's hear him whine about his, uh, his plastic crack having women in it. Has the time come to say farewell to Games Workshop? Now, perhaps you aren't familiar with... I'm really curious. What are conservatives going to fall back on that isn't woke now? Like, because conservatives really, really pushed the idea for a long time that Warhammer was the last bastion of anti-wokeness. So what media is going to become the thing they're going to gatekeep now? Is it going to become Harry Potter or something? Like, I don't know. That's not a deep enough lore universe to satiate them like warhammer is a big property that is overtly in their view conservative and popular but now that they know it's woke where are they gonna go what's their final fallback point gonna be culturally is there anything they could try to claim at this point anything popular anime but anime is is pretty woke like, anime, anime can't not suggest that a female character is a lesbian or bisexual. They can't not do that once. Like, you know it's probably just to appease, like, horny men, usually. But, like, it's always there. And that, that counts, you know? That's pretty progressive. You've got episodes of, like, One Piece and, like, other animes from, like, the 90s and 80s and early 2000s depicting trans people positively. Like, 
anime is just like Japan is like hyper conservative in ways and then also hyper progressive in certain ways. Like what is considered the sort of list of values you have as a hyper conservative and the list of values you have to have as a hyper progressive in Japan is just not the same as in America, right? Like immigration and race stuff are basically the same and line up pretty well. But when it comes to stuff like LGBT rights and whatnot, uh, secularism, th that that's where things get a little muddy in terms of what do the hyper conservatives and what do the like more progressive people believe. Games Workshop, perhaps you aren't familiar with the Horus Heresy with Warhammer 4K. Even if you aren't, I would still encourage you to listen to my profound insight in this video because as we are all appreciators of hermetic wisdom, we know that as above, so below. So you can use this example to, to analyze other similar happenings. So basically, I'm not going to go into all too much detail here because we're going to get to the point relatively quickly. So anyway, Warhammer 40k, Warhammer Fantasy, even the old world, it's gone increasingly woke over the last few years. And now, why is this, you might ask? And you can see many examples of this. So when they revamped the old world... Do I even need to argue against the idea that it's gotten woke? Like, I could just say, like, oh, no, it hasn't gotten woke. You're just, like, it's on your head. You're just freaking out over nothing. But, okay, sure, let's say it has gotten woke, whatever the fuck you guys mean when you say woke. How's that bad? It seems like when you guys say woke, you mean, like, representation has been shoehorned in or just is there. Like, you'll say it's that when representation is shoehorned in with some committee designed, like, we need to do this so that people will have this response um, type of thing. But, like, no matter what, regardless of what the evidence is, if there's minorities in a piece of media, it's called shoehorned in. Like, people call it and say it's shoehorned regardless. So... If the argument is that having minority representation is woke, we haven't really heard an argument for why that's bad. I can make an argument for why that's good. Even if I see the argument that Warhammer has gotten more woke, I can argue why it's good. How many young women who like Warhammer and are going to get into Warhammer as it gets more popular are going to see the female custodians and be like, oh shit. There are women in, in the Imperium who are, like, these jacked-up, top-of-the-fucking-chain-of-command right under the Emperor, um, like, badass, giga-trans-human, like, space warriors. I want to, like, start lifting weights and get big. Like, imagine you've got, like, some, I don't know, 13-year-old girl who discovers Warhammer and finds about, out about the female custodians, and she's like, I must become that. I go to the gym tomorrow. And, and, like, by the time she's 20, she's, like, just ripped as fuck, inspired by the custo Obviously, this is an extreme example, but what I'm pointing to is very real data that suggests that the representation of my marginalized groups, whether it be women, uh, racial minorities, uh, gender minorities, or um, uh, sexual minorities, like gay and trans people, etc., in media helps to melt away anxieties, bigotries, and stereotypes about those groups to an almost similar degree as having friends of those groups in real life. That representation matters, and the younger that representation is introduced, the less likely you are to have those negative beliefs about those groups because you don't have ignorance. You don't have... They're not like a thing that is weird or different to you, so you're not going to just make up things and have fear and and you know fear of the unknown type stuff but at the same time i think this guy knows that this guy's like an open nazi and J Cure. i think that this guy and a lot of conservatives who complain about wokeness know that and i think that's why they're complaining about wokeness i think it's less so that they are bothered by the presence of these characters, principally speaking, I mean, I'm sure it bothers them to a degree, but I think what really bothers them is that the implementation of characters from these groups that they don't like means other people, even younger people, are going to have potentially racist or bigoted biases melt away upon being exposed to these representations, and thus they're going to have less people who are primed to agree with them in the future politically. I think they know that this representation, this wokeness is a good thing for these marginalized groups, and that's exactly why they argue against it.
which I was excited for to begin with, but then they started immediately the first new novel showing Bretonian female knights. And we'll get into this in a, in a minute as well with female representation, because it's absolutely not what it's about. But first things first, why... It's not what it's about. Okay, if it's not about women being represented, then... I don't know why this is suddenly the thing that made you mad at Warhammer, because Warhammer has had loads and loads of contradiction, contradictions and um, retcons and changes over the years. It is famous for it. Famous for this. Warhammer is famous for this. The real Warhammer lore YouTubers, I watch some lore YouTubers on Warhammer that are the real shit motherfuckers. These are the guys who like pull out their old dusty 1990s night or an early 2000s Warhammer books to like that are about lore to find old fucking lore stuff for their videos to cross reference it with the wiki and current stuff. So it's like the these guys will tell you in an instant, yes, Warhammer lore has never been consistent, and this is by nature, and simply just a a, a relic of the fact that Warhammer is a multi-person universe, you know? There are many, many people working to make the universe of Warhammer. It has a bunch of authors. Many of them are just, like, super into one period of time within, like, the Imperium, and like, or they're just super into, like the necrons or something and so they just write about them like there are different periods of time there are huge events there are single planets where during a span of like five out of forty thousand years of storytelling you've got like 10 books worth of story to tell like that is how huge of a universe it is and it's a bunch of people working together to write that story and so yeah there have been many other changes before this. The idea that it's totally not about the um about it being women is fucking wild to me. The idea that they would try to claim that. Hold on. Does the golden one try to claim he's not a Nazi anymore? Is, is did he try to put the mask on? Cuz I remember back in 2016 he was like openly he was a Nazi and and with JQ. But maybe that's changed now. Maybe he put the mask on and he just does, like, pseudo right-wing culture war content these days. You know, when I covered that Brandon Herrera video of him, like, uh, in the Confederate flag shirt, talking about, like, he was working for that Confederate Heritage Society and talking about the War of Northern Aggression and stuff, the Brandon Herrera fans raided the fuck out of that video. They, it's the most dislikes I've had on a video in a long time. And all the comments are like, he made a joke once and he said a thing back when he was a teenager. You really got him. Man, You no wonder BreadTube is dying. It was like something along those lines. And it's like, why won't, why won't any of these commenters say what he says in those videos? Like reiterate it or defend what he said? Why is it always he made a joke? Or he said a thing when he was 19. I just wanted to reply to the, to each one like, what did he say? Repeat what he said. I, I almost just wanted to copy-paste, repeat what he said to each one. Because like a lot of these content creators, you gotta understand, their fans, if they knew the, the YouTuber they're watching was far right, their fans would not support them. And so their fans are huffing, huffing a lot of copium in order to believe that the person they're watching is not even conservative in some cases. So as a progressive YouTuber, you have to start by establishing the YouTuber that you're covering is a conservative at all. Because in my case, I have Brandon Herrera fans in that video comment section insisting Brandon Herrera isn't even a conservative. Like, these... YouTubers are very effective at giving their normie, centrist, and even left-leaning fans copium that will make them downright aggressive to people who call out their politics. I called the quartering a Nazi with Nazi sponsors on Twitter. Some dipshit did that to me where they said, so drinking coffee makes you a Nazi now, lol. Yeah, they'll never, like, state themselves what you are saying is the thing that makes them a Nazi because if they repeat it out loud, then they have to say out loud the thing that is 
objectively that bad. Like, imagine if those commenters had to, like, outright commented, okay, just because he wore a shirt with the Confederate flag on it and worked for a Confederate heritage society where he produced a video telling people to join that Confederate heritage society sitting next to a statue of a Confederate general and call it the War of Northern Aggression. And, like, just because he did that, does not mean he liked the confederacy like they couldn't like if they wrote all that out it would be the most ridiculous comment ever it would look like a joke comment but instead they had to word it as just because he said some things when he was a teenager it's like what were those things though what were those things but yeah people will legitimately die on the spear to defend the most obvious nazi evidence of their favorite youtuber is games workshop Broken ideology? It's no ideology, minimum volts. No ideology is what it is. Suddenly going woke or suddenly over the last few years. Yes, one would think that it's to cater to left-wing extremists. And the left-wing extremists, they probably flatter themselves by believing so themselves. But we can look at... I don't think so. The major... I, I think that, like, based on what I've seen, especially of people who work at Games Workshop that I follow on Twitter, is that they just, like, are progressive-leaning and they write their own stories that have their own, like, implications and they get, like, canonized. And, like, yeah, that's just kind of how it works. The same tends to go for, like, progressives in gaming. Um, like, usually there's, like, a lot of people who are progressive on the team and that like has an effect on the choices they make um if it was a team of conservatives do you really think that the conservative game devs would just say okay master we will do what you say to like the people the money men upstairs telling them to make a woke game and then make the game woke like is that do they think that's a thing that's happening or do they think maybe the artists behind this stuff are themselves progressive it's just so bizarre. You know what I mean? Anyway. Shareholders in Games Workshop. And then we see a certain company, BlackRock. Now, what does BlackRock do, you might ask? Yes, oh they my have God, a certain it's sweet system baby. in place which rewards companies for being sweet essentially Sweet Baby Inc. Woke. is back. Use that terminology. When I say woke, I mean extreme leftist. You can use whichever term you want. So when I say leftist in this sense, I don't mean someone who's concerned with working minimum volts we're not here to listen to a fan's opinion on this we're here to make fun of conservatives getting upset about this okay this is not a warhammer fan segment class rights or anything like that we're talking about degeneracy basically so there's it's got a really good message okay all right you, you usually recommend good stuff i'll i'll give it a shot well we'll we'll hear a good Warhammer fan's opinion on this. Because I don't know jack shit about Warhammer in the grand scheme of things. This guy definitely knows more than I do. Hey. How's it going? It's like 10 p.m. right now. It's probably not the best idea to do all this. But I've been asked 9,000 times about the custodian thing. So I guess I'll, I'll just rattle through all the things. And so I can like have a place to point chat. Like a video. Ask me these damn questions. I just be like, "Here, watch this, and, and go away." Female custodians' thoughts. It's fine. It's really makes no difference. You know, it's a giant, ten foot tall person in power armor. Regardless whether that has an S H E or an H E, genuinely doesn't matter. It, it affects the game in no way whatsoever, nor really the universe. It's it's nothing. It's cool. It really doesn't. Like, to be clear as well, the custodians, even though they're in a pretty important position, they don't do much. That's the thing. Um, the Emperor has spent the last, like, long time as a hussed out maybe corpse with some latent, latent psychic power kind of in it still, for sure, for like, t yeah, 10,000 years. So the custodians have just kind of been chilling, like just guarding this really important guy on a really important throne in a really important place. Um, yeah, the custodians were handmade by the emperor. There's no reason they can't be women. I mean, it, it would make sense if there were some women, right? Like, wouldn't the emperor realistically view like like the, the emperor's ideology makes sense for him to have chosen women to have been custodies because the emperor's ideology is not that of the imperium 
the entire idea of the Imperium is that they they took the ideology of a super based awesome guy and warped it and, and perverted it into a religion, which is the thing that he was against. It's an analogy for like Christians perverting Jesus's messaging, if anything, like. Jesus says, love thy neighbor, and now modern-day Christians, like, advocate for murdering gay people and trans people. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, like, Warhammer has, from the start, like, the creator of the Imperium and the story of Warhammer, from the start, has talked about it being a satire of conservatism and conservative, like, uh, glorification of war and stuff like that. It, it was also itself, much like Starship Troopers, a bit of a tongue-in-cheek parody of uh, uh, of the original Heinlein Starship Troopers, the idea of it in many ways. Um, yeah, like, the right just isn't good at picking up on satire, and we're just sort of in this age of the right, like, def dying to defend that their piece of media they like isn't satire making fun of them. And then the me the creators of the media come out and say, yeah, we're making fun of you. And they get super angry and disown the media. What are they going to fall back on now? Like, Call of Duty, maybe? Are we going to go back to, like, Call of Duty being the conservative game? How are they going to do that? Isn't, like, aren't there, like, skins that are black women for Call of Duty now? Like, the right can't have anything these days. Can't have shit in the alt-right. Anyway, I really am uh I I really am curious what you guys think of this whole thing. Like do you think the right are going to just like abandon all forms of nerd media and shame nerd media now? Like are they going to try to pull the jock card and they're going to be like, "Hmm, we're the right. We don't like nerd media and video games and tabletop stuff. That's for woke people and nerds. We we like working out and fighting and shooting guns. Like are they just going to like go to being that? That would go hard as fuck if they abandoned nerd culture and just became like the rough and gruff like we'll take guns from them too. Guns are next. Regardless, though, I, I hope that's what happens. I'm curious what you guys think. Comment down below what you think. I like reading your comments, and your comments boost the videos and the channel, so it really helps a lot if you do. You can also leave a like to help me out. It really does help, regardless of whether you're watching live, watching a um, VOD, or watching an upload after it goes out on its own. And, of course... Please consider supporting me by donating, subscribing, or gifting a sub on my website, xanderhall.com forward slash live, or supporting me financially through YouTube, Twitch, Streamlabs, Stream Elements, or Patreon. With all that said, regardless of how you enjoyed, thank you for watching. Don't forget to join my Discord or buy merch either. It really helps. Thank you.